Hi everyone, Armored Pants here, and I have another video for you in the German line. This is the Tier 8 Tank Destroyer, the Rim Borsig. And we're going to have a look at the tech spec, and as always, we're going to use Blitzhanger.com. Now, we're following on from this Stuart Emil, and before that, the Nashorn. As I said before, this is one of the most difficult tank lines to play in Blitz. Um, now this is very similar to the story emerald, but there's also a lot of differences which we're going to look at during the tech spec. Now I would use chocolate to max out view range because it's important in a TD like this. Um, and I would also get the top gun. Why? Well the other option is the 128mm gun which is what you have on the store emerald. But why use that? Because this is basically a, a mobile gun. And so therefore I use the top gun. And believe me the top gun is great fun. Now you do have lower pen on your normal rounds from top gun compared to the 128 millimeter but you have higher pen on your promo rounds and when you come up against tier 9 heavies as you will eventually in this that's quite important you get an extra 33 millimeter sorry no, 23 millimeters of pen on your promo rounds when you use the top gun but the big difference is you get 85 millimeters of he pen versus 65 on the 128 that means that you can pen nearly everything side and back on with HE. And uh, one of the key differences is that the reload on this is significantly slower than stored ammo, it's almost four seconds slower. It also has very low muzzle velocity, 645 meters per second. Even when you use supercharge, it only goes up to 839 meters per second. That means you need to know how to deflection shoot. If you can't do deflection shooting, I don't know what that is, please watch the tank destroyer guide that we have on channel here because you're going to need to know how to do deflection shooting because of this slow muzzle velocity. In other words, you're going to need to aim the shell if you're firing over a long distance in front of the target and let the target move into it because it's going to take some time for that shell to arrive. Key difference too is gun depression. You know, when you've got 5 degrees of gun depression on this compared to 15 with the stored ammo. So that's another big difference. Key difference three, this has a 360 aiming arc, it has a turret. It's far more maneuverable, far more agile than the Stuart Emil in terms of getting shots on target. Key difference four is that it's faster, it's 10 kilometers an hour faster, 35 kilometers versus 25 on the Stuart Emil. That means you can get around the map better, you can get into those sniping positions faster and get your shots on target faster. Like the Stuart Emil and the Nash Horn and all the tanks in this line, it has zero armor. You're a shell magnet and you're going to get HE spammed at you. Therefore, you need to run two repair kits because you do not want to get tracked in this thing out in the open. You also have an open top, so guys are going to be spamming HE at you. Your ammo rack is exposed. You can be hit for anything from a thousand up alpha rolls from the big guns in tier 7, tier 8, and tier 9 in this tank you need to keep safe you are should be the five kilometer sniper that's really what you want to be in this tank you do not want to be getting up close and personal on this thing because you will suffer greatly and um, now in the game that we gameplay we're going to watch in this tank i tried to go into a sniping position at the start but unfortunately there are no targets um, so i have to go all the way around the map and i end up sort of a flanking position but again, that's talking about the speed of this tank. You couldn't do that, for example, in the store Emil, do a tank before it. Now, in terms of tactics, you need to play this as with the store Emil, as with the Nash Horn. You need to fight from distance if possible. You need to snipe, get into those sniping positions. You need your team to help you. You need the light tanks and you need the medium tanks to spot for you. Because even with uh, the, max, the maximum view range on this, you're still gonna have a lower view range than light tanks. And if you get isolated in this thing, you're going to die. You have no armor, you have almost a 16 second reload, you're dead. Um, so really, you need to, your team to play for you. And that's why this tank is so difficult to play. Because you can't really play it in isolation. You need your team to help you. Now I've checked the setup. I've seen that we have three fast moving tanks. So therefore, I think I'm going to go to sea and try to support them. But because I have a tank with no armor, I'm not going to go directly to C, I'm going to go to the left of C and see if I can snipe and support my team. Now, um, that often pays dividends on this map going to this top left hand corner to the left of C, um, or to the right hand of C if you're coming from the other side. Um, but on this occasion, there are no enemy targets, they've all gone towards A. So now I have a decision to make, I can sit here with my big gun and do absolutely nothing, 
or I can do what I don't really want to do in this tank is um, move around the map and get up closer with the enemy and run the risk of getting spotted or maybe even isolated but the dice have been rolled in this game now so I decide to play them as I, I as they have rolled I'm gonna play the hand that I've been dealt to use another gambling analogy sorry about that and um, so you can see here though that the speed of this tank the, those extra 10 kilometers an hour mean that I can move into a position where I can help my team because if I was in a store ammo, I would still be up at the tram on the other side of the map um, and I would not be able to get around the map. Plus, you can't really flank in a tank that has no turret. Of course you can, but it's much more difficult, right? Now, we're already uh, a tank down here and I haven't fired a shot. I'm not even in the game yet. So it's time to get my game face on and get into this. Now, here I'm going to slow this down. Have a look at this. This is a big armoured beast. But this gun makes mincemeat of it. Not a problem at all. Massive alpha roll. And you see what I mean about having a turret? You know, it allows you to get back into safety a lot faster. Um, now, this VK101P decides he's going to try to come at me. Come at me, bro. Uh, but unfortunately for him, I've already reloaded. And it's game over. That vulnerable little uh, lower tooth, um, that lower plate on this uh, VK100P is um, basically like pushing a knife through butter with this gun. It just blasts right through it and smashes them. Um, but we're still in trouble. We are five, three tanks down here now. But I get a nice shot off here. A bit of a waste of my big alpha roll, but I need to clear that gun, so I'm happy to do so. Um, and now I am going to. Um, see if I can find another target IS 6 is going up there nice shot right into the butthole there we go beautiful maximum alpha roll on the AP lovely stuff and I'm rolling back into cover now we're 4-2 down we're still in a lot of trouble um, and this now we're 4-1 down and I'm in a lot of trouble here but I'm gonna keep calm and I'm gonna use this gun to big effect and I'm gonna put around into him here. I'm gonna slow it down here. I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting till it's not red. And I'm bam, put one into him right into the wheel, um, from into the wheelhouse at the front. And I'm rolling backwards. I'm gonna take a round here, but I'm gonna take minimum roll that I can. You can see it hits the front of the tank, the only part where there is a tiny little bit of armor. So I'm happy enough with that. It was only like a 169 alpha roll, which really in a tank like this is not so bad at all. Particularly as he may have been firing hash at me, and now I'm gonna clear him off. Okay, now it's a clobbing off situation. The spick is coming for me. Um, I'm able to maneuver into position so that he can't get me. Now I was trying to go for HE with him, and this is the danger of HE um, rounds. I should have just gone with the AP there. I have no idea why I didn't get a maximum alpha roll and clear him with that HE round. Hit him right on the side, it didn't go into the tracks. And sometimes HE, particularly on big guns like this, is a bit wishy-washy and you don't get the result. Um, and now um, I am um, getting spammed with Russian here or Bulgarian or something, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the guy is trying to say to me. I don't understand why people who only speak Russian play on the European server. Not that I'm anything against it, but they just can't communicate with you. So I don't know, he might be giving me good advice, bad advice, I don't really know, but I don't understand it. But anyway, um, now I'm gonna, I have a really, really long reload. So I need to take my time on this shot. Um, and I do clear off that spick. That spick was really dangerous for me because um, he is fast mover, and uh, I really don't. Want, I really wanted to get him out of the way. I'm more maneuverable than the IS six, so therefore I'm not so afraid of him as I am with the spick. Now I'm going to slow this down here. I really don't know what happened there because that's an AP round right into his butt, and I don't know what happened. Um, I slowed it down because originally I thought I'd missed him, but you can see there that actually if you look at where the aiming dial was um, it was right on his butt uh, and I was like at that range there's no way I should have missed but anyway thankfully I had enough hit points to be able to take him out now I have a decision to make um, I am going to cap um, A why am I capping A? 
when maybe it would be better to go to B because that would stop them getting points from B. Well, the reason is I don't know where that ISU is. And I really am one shot for him. And I really don't want to go out. Uh, sorry, yes, you. I really don't want to go out and uh, not knowing where he is. Because also I was spotted. And I don't know where he is. So I could drive into B. He could be sitting on the opposite side of that map. Pop around into me and it's game over. So I don't know where he is. But now I've reset camo and I'm unspotted. So I'm going to go to B and see if I can find out where he is. But I don't need to. Game one. Uh, Klobinov situation, mastery badge delivered, um, almost 4k damage, Klobinov medal as well, uh, high caliber, and top gun as well I think, so good display in the Rim Borsik waffle tractor. Now, um, that is not a typical game in this tank, the reason I showed it was that um, it contained a few things that I think are noteworthy for this tank, firstly I was moving into position to snipe from, which is really what you should be doing in this tank. But when that didn't work out, this tank allowed me to uh, move into position where I could actually um, uh, get my gun into play and win the game for my team. Um, so the speed of the tank, the fact that it has a turret allowed me to do that. And you saw in the duel there with the IS-6, it's quite maneuverable and quite agile. I thought it's important to highlight that. But I would suggest that you do not do this when you're playing this tank for the start. When you get comfortable with it, when you get familiar with it, you can do things like that. But the initial stages, when you're getting used to it, particularly getting used to this new gun, um, I would sit at the back and try to snipe. Now this is a very tough tank to play, and there's no shame if you struggle with this tank. It is not easy to play. It is one of the most difficult tanks to play because you're in tier eight and you're up against some of the best players. And this tank is not for everybody. I know people who in this line they maybe struggle past the store demo, they get to this and they just give up. And these are very good players. So there's no shame in that. But if you do decide to persist, this tank is all about the gun. So get the top gun ASAP. It's really fantastic. It's great gun, but you need to practice with it. The low muzzle velocity on it is something you need to get used to. Um, and you're going to miss shots at the start. You're definitely going to miss shots at the start. Um, and that's a, that's, that's a big bummer because it's a slow reload in this tank. It's uh, over 15.35 seconds, so you're gonna, it seems like you're waiting a lifetime for it to reload. Now you can um, uh, counter that by using supercharged to maximum of velocity, but even then it's still pretty low. Now at the start of the game, when this tank, check uh, the setup and choose your tactics accordingly. Um, and when you're starting to play the tank, um, snipe. Go behind the enemy, sorry, go behind your heavies or go to a sniping position and snipe get used to the gun especially before you decide to get into more difficult situations later on when you're more comfortable you can support meds and lights but only when you're comfortable with the tank because believe me this tank is so unforgiving you need to be very comfortable with it to get into those situations because you have no armor none at all everyone's going to pen you you're going to be spammed uh, with he and um, and he doesn't bounce and if it's a big gun like an su or an isu or another um rim you are gonna get hit for massive amounts of alpha rolls so keep safe play from behind your teammates especially when you're new to the tank play cautiously and get used to it as i said at the start you also need a good team you need them to spot for you you need them to help and support you this is a very difficult tank to influence a game on your own so please bear all of those things in mind because it is a difficult tank to play. Now the music was Mozart, it was the Horn Concerto, which I hope you liked. I personally love it. Um, and I would like to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Cheers, mush. And I guess all remains to me for say is pants off.